Are you feeling stuck and stagnant in your life and with your manifestations? Feeling like there must be more to myself, there must be more to my possibility? Well, here, I'm throwing you a life vest this episode. In today's episode, we're going to explore how to become unstuck and to journey free on your way towards your manifestation, that place where it lives called destination manifestation uh, yeah take a step back for the ones who can't do that hope I separate from my past all right hello and welcome to yet another episode of destination manifestation i'm your host Brittany hoops if you're already subscribed to this show thank you so much you guys you you know i've been trying to keep, come up with names for you guys well i love now that the show has launched and you guys are like interacting with me which is so much fun you guys have sent me some names for what we should call this community so there's a few ideas that were floating around okay um here's a big brother themed one that was sent in Desty besties <laughs> another idea was team hypnosis because you know my last name is hoops hypnosis i love that we love a good hypnosis hoops pun or hoopsters was another one that was sent in. I'm liking it. I'm liking it, y'all. Good ideas. But for now, I'm just going to say hello to you. Yes, you. I'm speaking to you. There's no one else like you in the entire world. And this show is to honor your journey towards destination manifestation. You're so spectacular. I just hope you know that. And today we're talking about being stuck. What do you do when you're feeling stagnant, when you're feeling like there has to be just like something more to life, something more to yourself, to your possibility, to what you're creating? And so we're going to unstuck ourselves if that works, okay? It kind of reminds me as I was thinking through this episode, it reminded me of that um, Beauty and the Beast song. You know how Belle sings, there must be more to this provincial life. <laughs> I hear you, Belle. Even Belle felt this way. And she's a freaking Disney princess, okay? We can feel this way sometimes too. And I do remember, I don't feel this way now. Right now I feel very unstuck, which is beautiful and the kind of energy I want to bring to this episode. But I do remember feeling this way when I was at the end of my corporate marketing career several years ago, right? I was in year seven out of eight of slogging through a job that I really just did not like. I tried to convince myself in my mind that I liked it, which, hey, that's good. Make lemonade out of sour lemons, right? But I was just feeling like I, it was just the same old, same old. I didn't feel like I was growing. I had very little to look forward to. It just felt blurg. <laughs> you know that feeling? The blurg feeling. That actually reminds me. That's kind of my favorite. I'm always asking my my one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy and coaching clients, like, how does this thought make you feel? Like, what's your emotions? So many of us are cut off from our emotions. And my favorite emotions whenever I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients is when they give me like, what do we call it? Automatopias? Like the sound blurg, ugh, oog. It's like, it's so funny as how sometimes we just don't even have the words for what we're feeling, but it's just a sound. And it's like, I hear you. I understand what blurg feels like, even if blurg might be not be on, you know, a traditional emotions list. And so that's what we're going to be discussing here today. How can we snap ourselves out of this in a positive way to set you on a positive train of living and a train of thought so that you don't have to have like life slap you across the face like I talk about <laughs> in episode one. If you're interested in my story, that's why I just got it all out and open and there for you in episode one. Go back to episode one if you want to know more about my background and like how what my blurg felt like. I'll, I'll I share it there. And if you stick around to this episode, at the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you a tool that you can use, literally it is my gift to you, that will help you snap out of it, like I'm talking about, that will help you start to flesh out and determine your next chapter, because you get to write the chapters of your life. Taylor Swift just went on this era's tour, right? We each have our own eras, and I want this next era for you to be one where you don't feel stuck. And if you want to see, if you want to feel, if you want to experience what that unstuck version of you is like in vivid detail, I mean, if you want to feel it as if it's happening here right now, because the version of you it is, 
this tool that I'm going to share with you is absolutely for you. So be sure to stick around. I'm going to share instructions on how you can get your hands on it for free, might I add, later on in this episode. But can I just say, I just feel like we all need to just kind of like recalibrate and give ourselves a moment here. Give yourself permission right here in this moment, right now, to give yourself some grace with all of this. Okay? I understand. Feeling stuck, it's not your fault that you're feeling stuck here right now. It doesn't mean that you can't do something about it. It doesn't mean that it isn't up to you to implement some of the things I'm going to be sharing today so that you will get unstuck. It's your life. But it's not your fault that you're stuck in the first place. And I think that's where so much of our struggle comes from is like beating ourselves up for where we're at right now. I know I see that with my one-on-one clients all the time. And that's like the first layer we just have to remove from all this is like the beating ourselves up for being a certain way just makes it worse. (laughs) It really does. You know how you get yourself out of feeling stuck or feeling blurg? is when you, you like I'm using blurg as like a a proper emotion now, how you get yourself out from all of that is through love and compassion to yourself. You cannot beat yourself up enough to feel unstuck. That's not the way we motivate. There are There is so much societal conditioning and so many societal conditioning patterns that act just like quicksand, sucking us in, contributing to the stagnant feeling. Because think of it this way, since we are very young, we're conditioned to become observers rather than creators. We're conditioned to become reactors rather than responders. Because think of this, like, do you remember yourself when you're a kid? That's why I love to do inner child work. That's what I do with my one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching clients. We do deep inner child healing work. Because as kids, before all this conditioning came about, most of us were wild dreamers. Our imaginations just ran wild. But for some reason... Over time, this that imagination of ours, that fun of ours, that energy becomes diminished. It becomes this diminished, dampened thing that it's almost like we view imagination and fun and energy as something that's very childish and like not responsible to engage in these very true faculties of ourselves, to engage in these parts of ourselves. And it's not like those parts of ourselves we outgrow or they go away. No, they're still there. They just, we train ourselves to sort of harness them, suppress them, and put them down. Like we somehow think that those parts of ourselves aren't as valid as these other more logical thinking parts of ourselves. And even some of us do this with our our emotions too. I think it's very rampant for the men in our society to dampen their emotions in this way. There's even more societal conditioning there that's saying it's not okay to feel and express these things. It doesn't make it go away. It just dampens it and suppresses it and it needs to go somewhere and the pressure builds up. Right. We have this this like sort of thought that we need to get serious and deal with reality, reality (laughs) for having been on a reality TV show. You think I would like reality a little bit more. But what I hate about reality is most people see it is they think it's just one thing that we all share (laughs) when really we each have our own perception. We each have our own reality. Like, wouldn't you just love to be able to see through, me and my husband talk about this all the time, wouldn't you just love to be able to see through somebody else's eyes? And like, what if the color blue wasn't even like the way I see blue? Like I'm looking at something blue right now. What if it's not even like my blue is not your blue? Like we don't know. (laughs) And what we do know about neuroscience and how our brains work is that there's so much filtering going on by our conscious and our subconscious minds that even a lot of times we aren't even, we aren't hearing the raw data of what's coming in from the outside. Our brain is like filling in the gaps and making story about things. And so to say that there is one reality is just complete hogwash. We each experience our own reality. 
And sometimes we're conditioned to think that others create things and then we respond to it. You know, other people are making, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Other people are running the government. Other people are doing this. Other people are doing that. And I just am here and I react and respond into this reality that has already been created that, you know, there's the world and then I'm just living in it. And you can feel how that just feels so disempowering to live in such a reactive state. You can see how all that conditioning makes you feel really stuck in who you think you need to be. And so when this happens, we enter almost into this like sort of dormant state. None of this goes away. It just gets suppressed. And the state of where we create or we manifest what I like to call by default, meaning that we don't direct it anymore. It feels like it's just happening to us. Because here's the thing, even though we might suppress all these things, manifestation, creation of our own accord is still happening. You couldn't cut it off or suppress it if you tried. You just aren't in the driver's seat of it. It's kind of like turning off a light switch, okay? You can turn off a light switch and the room that you are currently in can go dark, But that doesn't get rid of the electricity that's pulsing within your walls, that's pulsing throughout the grid of your entire city. That energy is there. You are just not allowing your connection to it. And you can imagine when you do this, life starts to feel very dark and sometimes bleak. And so if we do this again and again and again, we kind of become these like plants that are slowly wilting. It's like we're in a drought. (laughs) I can speak on this. I live in Texas. It's a drought, but it's of the soul. And so we crave that energetic connection to who we truly are again. Surely our lives weren't meant to be just a cog and a wheel. No, we're meant to be controlling and steering that steering wheel instead. And so here are some considerations for when you're feeling stuck. This is me throwing you a rope, throwing you the life vest, throwing, tossing you a ladder that you can use to get unstuck from where you're at. Reconnect with that energy of who you truly are. And if you don't know how to do this, please don't worry. It's okay. It's actually, I have some good news for you. It's far easier than it sounds or that it seems. In fact, you really can't help but do it. It it requires far more effort and energy for you to be disconnected than even to be connected because to be connected is your natural state of being. It's who you were born as. It's that spark of life and consciousness that fills you, that, that, that creates who you truly are. You can't help but do it as long as you stop doing that thing that you've been doing to keep it from happening. And so it's like one of my favorite teachers, Esther Hicks, Abraham Hicks, which if you haven't read or listened to any Abraham Hicks YouTube videos, or if you're not in the Abraham work Hicks world in some way, please go to my website, brittanyhoops.com slash resources, and I share all my favorite books, and you'll find that most of my favorite manifestation books are Abraham Hicks. Um, definitely pick up. Ask and It Is Given, that is a great book, um, as a good introduction book to Abraham Hicks. But you'll hear Abraham Hicks say this metaphor a lot, and it, and they explain it kind of like you're a cork in water. And you naturally, as that cork, you naturally want to bob right there on the surface. You want to be at the top of the surface of the water. But staying in this state of disconnection is kind of like pushing that cork down, pushing it down. Um, it's often like what I use. And if you're a one-on-one client of mine, you're like, oh no, Brittany, she's getting out the finger trap. But if you can see me right now, I, I keep one of these finger traps on my desk because that state of disconnection, it's like getting your fingers caught in the track. The more that you pull and you pull and you pull and you pull and you try and you try and you put effort, the tighter it comes in around you. This trap just traps your fingers. And it's kind of like pushing that cork down below the water. But how how do you get your fingers out of this trap? How do you allow that cork to float again? You relax and you release. And once you stop putting the effort into pulling or you stop putting the effort into suppressing that cork and keeping it down, what happens? The cork rises, the fingers release from the trap, and you're good. So you can do this. And guess what? 
you have this show now, right? You have me here to guide you in this reconnection process. So I'm going to share with you what my reconnection process looks like. I've been doing this for decades now, almost decades, at least 15 years now. And with time and practice, you'll find what works kind of uniquely for you. But when I find myself feeling blurg or feeling stuck or cut off from that energy that I know, the energy of all that is, the real me, the source energy, the God energy, the universe within me, here's what I do. Now, you can do this along with me right now, or you can just make a mental note to yourself to come back to this portion of the episode and do this later. You'll only really want to do this if you're in a place where you're safe, meaning that you're not driving, you're not running on the treadmill, whatever it is, okay? But you can listen to it. That's fine to listen to it. Just if you want to actually do the process, make sure you're in a place that's safe, okay? But when I want to reconnect, I close my eyes. I take a few deep belly breaths. And I just sort of kind of almost visualize these layers of resistance just sort of peeling off me, just kind of like I'm an onion. (laughs) This resistance, this build up problems and efforts and stuckness, just kind of like, ah, peeling off. Or if you want to get a little scandalous, I kind of picture like it's almost like a satin robe that's just kind of around you, just sort of falling off your shoulders. It's just like, ah. This release, this all the friction, all the noise, all the static in your brain, just sort of allow it to just release. And maybe it releases kind of like millions of butterflies that just kind of flutter away. And and you're just kind of left with this sense of peace and relaxation in your body, in your mind. And from that peaceful, just sort of contentment, that peaceful place. I just hold the intention of connecting with the larger part of me, of all that is, of God, of universe, whatever word, whatever label. We try to put these labels on this thing that is beyond label, right? But just connecting with that part of you. Maybe it's an energy. Maybe it's a white, bright, healing light. Maybe it's just a feeling, a deep inner knowing. Maybe it even has come to you in a dream. That's how I first got connected to my inner self, my inner guide, I had a dream that was so incredibly vivid. Let's see, I was living in New York at the time. So I must have been in my young 20s. It must have at least been a decade ago. And I was going through a pretty stressful time in my life work-wise. I can't remember exactly what was happening, but I know I was pretty stressed. And in this dream, it was just the most vivid dream you could ever imagine. It was just so real. In the dream, I'm in bed and I look up and there's this like angel that's above me in bed. And it's like it almost it doesn't look like a gargoyle, but it's like an angel, but it's like made out of stone. It's like it kind of looks like a gargoyle, but like angel version, like a stone angel. And it's just floating there above me. And it doesn't talk to me, but it just kind of almost transmits this like message to me that was like, you don't have to hold on to this anymore. I'll hold on to this. Give give this stress to me. Like, give this to me. And so I just kind of felt this, like, just what I guided you guys through. I felt this, like, release in my body. And just, like, all that stress that was, like, on my shoulders that was, like, had to do with, like, work, I just sort of gave it to this angel and it just took it and I felt so light and I felt so free. And that was really kind of like my first like, wow, I am connected to something bigger. And I still like when I think about that dream, it still just fills me with like with goosebumps because it's like, oh, that was that was when I connected with this energy. And so I want you to just visualize handing over this weight. You're feeling stuck right now. Something's keeping you in place. I want you to really Just see what your subconscious mind, how it speaks to you and says, like, what is that weight? How do you visualize that? Is it a is it a big rock? Is it stones? Is it like sand around you? Like really visualize untying maybe this rope that had been holding you back, that weight that has been keeping your cork stuck underwater for so long and just picture handing it over to this higher power. And feel the relief and the lightness in your body. 
And how I personally know that I've released enough resistance, how I've really made this connection, is I'll start to kind of feel a subtle shift. So feel that shift. Maybe you're noticing that the corners of your mouth are kind of just turning up into a slight grin. Oh, when you feel this lightness, when you feel this just pure love connection, you can't help but smile. Or maybe you'll feel goosebumps all over your entire body. You you all know me, especially if you watch Big Brother. That is something that happens to me quite a bit. I get full body goosebumps whenever I'm in alignment, whenever I'm connected to this energy. I feel it coursing through my body. It's the connection to all that is. Or you might feel it in some other way. And I mean that. When I am working one-on-one with my hypnotherapy and coaching clients, I channel this aligned, tuned-in state. It's part of my prep process before every single session that I do with a client. I make sure I'm in this aligned, connected space. That's the energy that I bring to my clients as their hypnotherapist because I know that my positive energy allows them, makes it easier for them to tap in and to connect into my frequency. It is literally like as their hypnotherapist, I'm throwing them the life vest. I say, here, attach to me, attach to my energy, allow your energy to elevate as it's attached to mine. And so I'll, you know, it's so interesting, this sort of energetic connection. And it's definitely something I want to learn more about and explore. I know Reiki has like a lot to do with this, but I'll feel my clients, I'll feel when they shift and when that shift is happening during a session. And I don't know the reasoning behind it. It's like, it's something that's kind of like almost behind, beyond sort of logical comprehension. But I'll feel lightheaded usually, like a little dizzy when a client is releasing, is really releasing resistance in sort of a big way during a session. And I'll usually feel full body goosebumps once they have gotten into this really good place. And I can't tell you, I mean, this has happened hundreds of times by now. And it's always so much fun. Usually I'll just kind of like, when I debrief with a client after a session, I'll be like, oh, so um, when was the turning point for you? When you, when did you know that you had released this thing? And they're describing the exact point that I was feeling these bodily sensations. And so that's how I know that this energy is connected to all that is because we can connect together energetically to release these things and feel these things. And so those are usually my personal signs with it. And I, I'm so lucky that I get to experience this every day as I work with my clients. It doesn't happen, I'll I'll say this, it doesn't happen with every client. And usually, if it doesn't happen, I know that that particular client needs to get um, into a better practice of allowing themselves to relax and enter this connected state. That's how I know that they are not connected, like they haven't dialed into the line. (laughs) And so that's my job as their hypnotherapist is to help them get there. And I actually have this very deep I have this whole process that I've developed of deep relaxation, a hypnosis sort of process that I'll, you know, prescribe for lack of a better term that I'll give to them saying, hey, like before we can do the super deep work, you need to allow yourself to feel safe enough and relaxed enough to get there. So practice with this recording and then we'll continue on. Um so th- that is to say, if you've never experienced this before and you want to experience this, there are things that you can do. There are things that I work with my clients to help them get better connected with this. But this is what it feels like. This connection is the feeling we achieve when we're in the theta brainwave state that is hypnosis. It's the same thing. I mean, that's what's so beautiful about this. This connection to all that is, is the same thing as the state of hypnosis, is the same thing as the theta brainwave state. It's just, do you want to describe it from a spiritual perspective? Do you want to describe it from a scientific perspective? Do you want to describe it from a psychological perspective? It's all the same thing. It's a releasing of resistance, a connection to our subconscious mind, a connection to the energy of all that is, all the same thing. So allow yourself to reconnect. Oh, it's like drinking water for a thirsty soul. It's reconnecting to your true power. This is where you tune back in to your creative. And I don't mean creative just in terms of like artistic creation or creative in terms of imagination, but creative in terms of it. you as a creator. You are a creator. You aren't just a, a an observer like society has kind of conditioned you to fall into. You have creative power. And that's through your creative power is where you manifest. Here's another suggestion. 
Four, getting unstuck. Disrupt your routine. I really struggle with the idea of routine and how it helps or hinders our alignment process because I can kind of see it both ways. Routine can kind of cut us off from this aligned action and aligned inner knowing, right? We've been trained since birth with nap time schedules and schooling and all these routines that are often layered on to young children, sure, as a way to help them gain routine and be a functioning society member. But a lot of routines, let's just be honest, a lot of routines are trying to make parents' lives easier or teachers' lives easier, right? Because by following these routines, we're essentially teaching and learning, don't listen to yourself, don't listen to your intuition or your needs, and follow the schedule instead. And then you're going to not like this schedule and you're going to feel bad and you have to use your power of will to push through. I mean, how many of us spend so much time in that kind of energy? And then we wonder why our manifestations aren't coming. <laughs> And when do we most use routine now as adults? Usually it's a way to feel in control somehow and to quell anxiety, right? We've all developed anxiety now and now we want things under our control and we want this routine so we know what to anticipate next. And a lot of the anxiety that I see in my one-on-one -on -one clients comes from getting off routine in some way, or not doing what they should be doing, or beating themselves up from not sticking to this routine and all these things. Now, I know I'm kind of like poo-pooing on routines right now. There are a lot of good things about routines too. It keeps the world operating. It helps with traditional productivity. And I think that's the problem, right? <laughs> like routines are based in thinking that denies the creative faculties within us, that denies our ability to have connection. The world that doesn't think that there's creative connection to all that is, is the same world that touts routine. It's very forceful. It's very willpower driven. And it's very taxing on our conscious mind when we're cut off to the 90% of us that is subconscious. So. I'm not saying to like ditch your routines entirely. Just be mindful with them. Is your routine coming at the expense of your intuition? Is your routine squashing your ability to hear your own intuitive nudges, to be pulled and aligned to inspired action? How many times have you said, have you had a bright idea or you've had the, the really intrinsic internal pull to go do something, but you look at your calendar and you're like, oh, but for the next four hours, I'm doing blah, blah, blah. So I can't do this. Sorry. And you and you tune that out. That's how we create this disconnection to ourselves. So it's a skill that has to be developed where you can balance these two. It's all about recognizing the pool. It's listening. <laughs> this energy, all that is, it, it, it's like turning down, down the volume every single time you negate it or you don't listen to it. Every time you push aside your intuition, the volume goes down a little bit more. But every time you honor it and you act on it and you allow it to inspire your action, the volume turns back up. And that's why developing that connection is so important. Destination Manifestation will be right back. So let me ask you this. When do you plan on living your dream life? Seriously. Because here's the thing. The past is done. The future is never promised. So when? Honestly, now is the only time you have to live a life of your dreams. Because the now is all you are ever guaranteed. It's all you ever really truly have. Now, I'm sure you guys see this all the time, right? These days, we have such amazing people doing such amazing things. We have international superstars like Taylor Swift and Beyonce taking the music world by storm. We have entrepreneurs that are literally funding their way to space. We have Nobel-winning scientists developing life-saving vaccines and cures to diseases. I mean, it's literally mind-blowing. And hey, don't get me wrong. I love these big, huge, life-changing manifestations. I see them every day. But just yesterday, I was traveling on home and I was thinking to myself, what if you just want to enjoy your life a little bit more fully? 
and manifest a life that brings you joy, contentment, maybe a little bit extra fun, freedom, time. Or maybe it's manifesting a new job or a move to a new city or even meeting your soulmate, your dream partner. Maybe it's manifesting a business that affords you a life to focus on your passions and what you love most. Hey, I manifested that. I understand. Well, it turns out that's exactly what one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching is designed to help you do. For manifesting more abundance, whether that be money, time, freedom, love, to creating a life that you're actually excited to live, one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching can help you create the mindset that will fuel a better, more joyful life for you. And through my one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching programs, I'll take your hand and I'll guide you through the tools that you need to align your thoughts, your beliefs, and your actions to create a life of your wildest dreams. Trust me, right now the world just feels downright chaotic. There's so many different things that are competing for our attention. You got the news, you got social media, obligations, chores, responsibilities. There's so many demands placed on us that it just feels like there's nothing left for you. But with my programs that use the power of hypnotherapy specifically for manifestation, My one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching programs are like having that personal trainer, but for your mind. That's kind of what I am, because together we build those mental muscles that are required to believe in your success, to map out a plan, and to support you every step of the way so that you can begin to live life on your own terms. Trust me, now is the time to live your life and start manifesting your success today. Go to BrittanyHoops.com to learn more. So when I notice a lot of resistance in myself, I get into that connected, aligned state, and I usually just do some writing on it. Like That's my biggest kind of like way to connect. Now, some people call this channeling. Other people call it automatic writing. It's basically when you're just, you get really good and connected and aligned, and then you just become sort of a vessel for your deep inner knowing. So it's kind of like I want to get out of my own way. Like conscious Brittany, as you all know her, I want to kind of put her off to the side so that I can just allow what I'm hearing, what I'm sensing from this connection and get it all out on paper so that Brittany can come back and read it later and benefit from that knowledge. (laughs) That's what it basically feels and looks like. Now, I know I'm getting like real woo-woo here, okay? But for me, this is what it looks like. And I just sit at my keyboard I allow my conscious mind, I'll I'll usually sit at my keyboard, I'll pull up a Word document, I'll type out a a question that I have, something that I've been struggling with, like what should I do today, or like what's the best use of my time, or how do I get one step closer to my goals, and I'll allow my conscious mind to pose that question, I'll write it down, and then I do the connection process that we already went through here today, and then I just rest my fingers on the keys. I just rest them on the keys. And after a short while, I'll just get the impulse to start writing. Now, if for some reason you stumbled upon this podcast because you thought destination manifestation was some like vacation destination and I was a travel agent (laughs) and this is a travel podcast then and you're not very spiritual, this is going to sound like a little cray cray to you. okay? and I understand that probably not the podcast for you. But everyone else who I'm sure understands these things, perhaps you've even experienced them yourself or you want to experience them, know that this isn't me. And by me, I mean conscious mind identified Brittany writing. I'm not thinking I'm receiving. I'm not inventing. I'm allowing. In fact, I usually don't even like remember what I wrote until I read it back later, which is like always, I mean, I've done this literally hundreds of times for years and years and years and years, and it still tickles me. Like it's always so, I'm like, ooh, what did the universe want to say today? And I'll go read it because I don't, I honestly, and I mean this 100%, I do not remember what was written. And what's crazy is as I'm doing the typing or the writing, usually, I mean, I'm trying to keep my mind very clear because then I'm in that receptive state. But sometimes little thoughts, little conscious mind thoughts will sneak in. And usually the thought is something along the lines of how in the world am I going to be able to read this later? This is just going to be riddled with typos because I don't know what word it is. It's very hard for me to track like, are my fingers still in the right place? Because I don't know what I'm writing. It's just like, it feels like I'm just going blah, 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 blah on the keyboard, right? But I kid you not, and this is always the coolest thing, when I 
allow myself to kind of, you know, reconnect back to my conscious mind, the typing is always perfect. No typos, like nearly every time. Like it literally blows my mind. It's just, I guess it was just because I didn't know what words were coming out that the act of typing felt very random to me. But it's, it's, I don't know. It's so cool. If you haven't done this, train yourself to do it. Again, it's that connection process. It's just learning and listening and feeling the impulse. Um, and if you have done it before, I'm sure you have stories like this to explain too, which I would love to hear. It's tapping into this knowing that usually points me in the right direction when I'm doing these things. So sometimes I'll feel it or hear it in terms of a download. Like it's usually not auditory for me. I know some people are. I know some of my clients are more auditory. Um, it's more of usually like a deep inner knowing, just kind of like a um, – I know Abraham explains it this way too. It's like blocks of thought. It's just kind of like like knowing <laughs> is the best way I can describe it. So it's all just about listening to that greater part of you, being relaxed and open enough to allow it to come into you. And it's not creating it, but it's receiving it. And this part of you knows if and when you need to get off your routine. So I do not, I'm sorry, you will not hear this. You'll hear other productivity coaches and other people say this, you know, just push through this kind of like, yeah, keep going mentality. I do not prescribe to that. Because that's cutting you off from your greater internal knowledge. Now, if you get that like, keep going from like this internal place in you, by all means, listen to it. I'm not saying that like pushing hard or even doing hard things isn't connected. It's just where is it coming from? Because when you push through and you do not feel connected, that's when you start to feel stuck. So my suggestion is rev up your engine. Do something outside of your routine. That's why I've been talking about like getting a haircut. That's why getting a haircut feels so good. It just sort of shakes things up. It adds novelty. It adds difference. It adds a dash of risk to your life, especially when you're trying a new hairstylist like I am right now. I'm like, I can't find anyone. I don't know anybody. Like I need to find like this is a risk going to somebody new, right? You guys will have to let me know if it looks good after I get it cut. <laughs> it forces you out of this automatic sort of numb mode to where you have to be present. So if you want to add some excitement, if you want to add some freshness, some flow to your life, disrupt your routine. Have you ever gave yourself a full day where there's nothing you should be doing, but you only did things that you truly wanted to do? Like, what would that look like for you? And I'm not talking about binging Netflix as a way to escape your life. No, as a way to numb. I mean doing what you want to do, taking a lot of action and doing things that really light you up and and setting all the guilt and the shoulds and all the that in the brain aside, exploring, questioning, learning, creating just on a whim, not not predetermining, no routine, following an impulse. Because we have to practice following impulses so that those impulses can get stronger and we can recognize them even more. And I will say, like I said, I'm not anti-routine. I follow a routine still, but I found a healthy balance that works for me. And you're going to have to figure out a million things that work for you. It's not a one-size-fits-all sort of thing. But I live most of my day, the majority of my day by routine. I plan out my calendar. I fit in everything I need to do. I have a block of time for work. I have podcast interviews. I have one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy and coaching client sessions all day long. Those are my commitments, right? I keep those. Those are my routine. But I figured out that after dinner, now this doesn't apply to every night because I do offer evening and weekend sessions, some of, you know, nighttime availability for my clients that are in different time zones and whatnot. I do have some days where I offer that. So it's not on all days, but most days. After dinner, I just kind of allow myself to do what I want. And so there's no shoulds. There's no predetermined things to do. That's where I practice following my impulse. And it's so interesting. You think that if you follow your impulse, you'd be like, well, Brittany, I'll never get anything done. I'll never want to do anything. And for the first couple of weeks of doing it, yeah, you might be, just be 
I don't know, just having fun. God forbid we have fun, right? You might just be having fun. But you do eventually find, like, I find a nice balance of fun and even quote unquote chores because they're things that I want to do. Like, okay, like I want my my bedroom to look nice, so I'm going to put away my clothes. You know, like you get in tap to what's most important to you when there really truly is no shoulds and your brain feels safe that you're going to take care of you and you're going to listen to your intuition. Um, once you build up that trust within yourself to do that, all different types of activities happen. And so my life has not crashed and burned yet <laughs> doing this process. I might look at a list of ideas of things to potentially do, a list that I had made at a prior time, and I'll kind of let whatever like jumps out at me on the list, I'll do. So if something on the list sounds good to me, I'll do it. If If it doesn't, I really like that because either way, it's really great. Either way, I'm like, hell yes, this is great. I want to do this. If it doesn't, it actually gives me very valuable information towards what would feel good. So let's say on the list it says clean the closet. If I'm like, nah, that's going to require too much kind of deciding power from me right now. I'm kind of tapped out in terms of making mental decisions today. That gives me valuable information. I'm like, okay, so I want something that doesn't require so much of my mental deciding faculties. What would be something that would feel really good right now that requires zero decisions? And then, and then I can think of ideas from there. I'm like, oh, well, reading a book would feel really nice or cleaning out my emails, just kind of setting aside kind of the emails that are heavy lifting emails for the morning, but getting rid of kind of the easy junk ones like that. I can put on some music. I can enjoy myself just kind of sorting through email. And I caution you, I know there are some of you all that are yelling at me right now saying, Brittany, but I have kids. I have a full-time job. I have responsibilities. Well, I don't have kids yet, but I do have more than a full-time job with my business. And I just want to caution you, how much are you clinging on to these things? I don't know if I want to use the E word quite yet because it's a strong word, that word excuses. But how much are you clinging on to these thoughts? And just be kind to yourself. Again, we're not looking to berate each other or ourselves. The world of outer conditions has really done a number on us, right? It's really convinced us that so many things need our attention in a systematized way. I mean, how many of us are doing things because we think that's what good mothers do or that's what good employees do or that's what good daughters do or that's what good wives do or whatever it might be, right? But it's not tuned into who we are and what we would do and how we would spend our one miraculous, beautiful life. Well, I say one. I guess we don't really know. We, we probably live multiple lives. I don't know. Yet again, another thing I'm not sure of. But – the life we're living right now, really sort through the facts versus the opinions, or we might even call it the fiction, right? There are far fewer things in your life that need to be done than you may think. It's all a choice. Now, you might find that you don't want the outcomes of some of those choices. That's why it feels like it's a non-negotiable. And that is so important that we determined what we truly have to do to survive, like as a human being, we need to eat food, we need to drink water, we need sunlight. What we need to do to survive and stay alive versus what we should do or have to do that isn't for survival or, God forbid, gasp, what we want to do. <laughs> so many of us diminish what we want to do and yet that's what helps us stay connected and unstuck. The more we can line up with what we want to do, which again, wanting to do something is just an intention, the more we can manifest ease and joy in our lives. A lot of times when I'm dealing with clients that are dealing with productivity issues or things, they just haven't lined up to the reason why they want to do the activity enough. They haven't tapped into the true desire, or maybe there's no desire there, which tells them something. All of a sudden, it becomes a want versus a should or a have to because of the intention that you're bringing to it. How can you get to a place in your life where you want to do most things that you do? <laughs> now that, when you can get to a place where you want to do most things that you do, that's the definition of living a life that you enjoy. So here's another thing that you can do to get unstuck. Write your new next chapter. 
Are there any outside factors? We've been talking about kind of all the systems that are in place in society. Are there any outside factors in your life that may be keeping you stagnant or even playing small? Is there anyone or anything who would much prefer you to be in the role of reactor versus creator? Because maybe you're just easier to manage or, dare I say, control if you don't realize your full power. I hate to say it, but, like, it's it's sad. These things do exist. And it makes me think of this, like, awful analogy. I don't know how true it is. But I think, like, back in the olden days, like in the circus, they used to train elephants. They used to put – oh, so sad. They used to put, like, ropes around elephants and tie them to a tree. And so the elephant only learned that it could like only move about six feet in diameter around where it had been tied. And they knew, these trainers, these like circus trainers knew that after a period of time, I don't know how long it was, a couple weeks or whatnot, they could untie the elephants and the elephants would not run free. They would, they had been trained. They had been programmed to think that they could only go six feet out in any direction, even when there was nothing tying them to the tree. Don't you just want to yell like, run free, you're not tied down. And that's kind of what I'm doing to you here right now. Run free. You're not stuck. That that rope that maybe had been tied around metaphorical you is not there. It's not real. It's an element of learned helplessness, about not taking full control and ownership for all of your power, your power to think what you want to think, your power to focus where you want to focus, your power to choose what you want to do. And it's important that we're mindful of these things because some people, some systems might benefit from you not realizing your power. They benefit from you being small. Here's a very small example, okay? And But I love it. And it's stuck with me my entire life. So long story short, in high school, I was like a major theater nerd, and I knew I wanted to be an actress. I knew that I wanted to go to a good theater school for college, and yet here I was, a freshman at this brand new high school, and I knew I had to take intro to theater so that I could do advanced theater the next semester and be in the school play. I knew that's what I needed, but my schedule did not allow me being able to take intro to theater. It was only offered during one class period, and I had some other class. So I went to my counselor, and I said, I need to be an intro to theater because next semester I want to be in the school play, and I have to do this class beforehand. And he was like, nope, nope, sorry, can't do it, can't do it. It's all full. So there's kind of two options for me there. I could have taken his answer at face value, not gotten into the theater class, gone home, cried, woe is me, I'll never get to be an actress. This would diminish my chances of going to NYU. I could longingly look at actresses on TV screens from here on out for the rest of my life and wonder what might have been. I could harbor anger and resentment at that counselor for squishing and squashing my dreams. I could write mean comments online on famous actresses' profile pages and how they don't deserve to win the Oscar as kind of a small way to exert my power that was denied to me this opportunity. Or I can do what I actually did, (laughs) which is tell that counselor, okay, thank you for your time. And then during that class period where I needed to have health class instead, go to the hallway where the health classes are, peek my head in the door, ask the teacher, is this a freshman health class? He's like, yeah. He's like some coach, right? He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Sit down. I'm literally sitting there in class. This is a true story. He does the roll call, eh, 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 calls all the names, anybody I didn't call. I raise my hand and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be in this class. And he's like, okay. And he writes my name down and he adds me to the class. And then I take that health class that semester. I get to do advanced acting the next semester. I get the lead in the play that next semester. I audition for NYU. I get into NYU. I become an actress. I do off-Broadway stuff until eventually I, no one else decides, but I decide that acting isn't really for me. I got to make that decision. No one else. You see the difference in those two where one, you're living life as the creator and the other one, you're living your life as somebody who has to be at the effect of things that had been created. These systems may make life seem very unfair and they may be really rigged out of your favor. I mean, I'm not saying that this is easy, okay? but you know better now. You know to watch for them and you know those opportunities where you can reclaim your power instead. 
And so the best way I could say in terms of learning how to develop the skill is looking for examples of people who have made these things possible, despite the systems. Okay, if there's a dream that you want, but you think something fundamentally, systematically is stepping in your way, I want you to go find somebody who has achieved that dream despite that. Find an example of somebody that has done it, because I will tell you there's somebody out there that has managed despite it, that you can replicate what they've done despite those systems. Whatever system you feel like like is keeping you down, find people who have pushed on despite it. Because if there are examples in this world of people who have done that despite it, you can do the exact same thing, too. In fact, there doesn't even need to be examples. It's just examples make it easier for you to latch on to an idea of something. You can be the example. So you get to decide how you'll write your new next chapter. That choice is yours and only yours. And this is a topic that I work on quite a bit with my hypnotherapy clients. There's kind of this misconception, I think, by a lot of people that people think hypnotherapy is kind of like a magic spell. You know, it's like something that's done to you. And that really could not be further from the truth. (laughs) And so when I get clients who are interested in hypnotherapy and I can sense they have that mindset, I literally just I, I send them some educational material and I say, come back to me once you realize your power, because you have to know your own power. Nobody can do anything to you. You cannot be hypnotized against your will, nor would I ever do that. I'm the conductor of the orchestra, sure, but you're the one playing the instrument. And so when I have clients that don't want to put in that work, and I would say it's hardly work, right? It's it's literally pressing play on a recording that you listen to every night before you go to bed. Usually they're looking for something to be done to them as opposed to learning and creating, right? Reclaiming their own power. They let the people, the systems, et cetera, rule their lives for so long, and they blame those things for their results. But it all comes back to realizing what can you take ownership back of? Because you're the only one who can reconnect to your power. What are you going to choose to think and feel and do now? You get to decide. You can choose to think whatever you want to think, to create whatever kind of reality you want. Why don't you just pick the thoughts that feel good to you? Because guess what? It's your reality. It doesn't need to be other people's, but it can be yours. Take your power back. Take your own power back. You create your own reality, the one in which you live in. You discover your possibility. You create your possibility. I've kind of actually come to this conclusion here recently, too. I really love being on TV. It was actually really fun. That old actress part of me really enjoyed the 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 experience of being on TV. I would love to have my own TV show someday. Like, wouldn't that be fun? Like a a reality show, but it's like where I like work with people with hypnotherapy and it's like uplifting. It's like it's like Marie Kondo, but like for hypnotherapy or like the home edit, but like for hypnotherapy. I think it'd be really fun. It's definitely a goal in my lifetime to have this, to have like my own Netflix show. But that idea... Was it any anything that ever entered into my mind until Big Brother? And what's so funny is nothing changed about me or about anything. Like, trust me, me being on Big Brother does not increase my chances of having my own show. Like, it is not that big of a deal. All that changed was my thought about it. All it did was help me believe that, like, yeah, this could be possible for me. I can be on TV. I was on 40 episodes of a TV show. I could have my own TV show. How can you create the belief for what might be possible for you right now? Because all it requires is a thought about your reality. So thank you, travelers, for joining us here today on this portion of your journey towards destination manifestation. I hope you're feeling free-flowing and free and unstuck after today. You are absolutely remarkable, and I want you to remember this. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Because if you do, you'll get next week's episode, which is going to be all about answering the question, how do I know if my manifestation efforts are working? How do you know? Hmm, how do you know? Well, I'll help you figure out if you're on the right track. And the one other thing that I want you to do after listening to this episode is this. Just like I promised you at the beginning of this episode, I have a tool for you that will help you with this reconnection process, that will help you grab onto the future and pull yourself up out of that stuck feeling into something more. And it's this free manifestation hypnosis audio I have recorded for you. You can download it at brittanyhoops.com slash manifestation audio. I link it in the show notes here. It's a 20-minute hypnosis MP3 
written and recorded for you. It's 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 quite nice, I will say. It's got background music. It's nice. And it helps you reconnect with the natural state of your own alignment. That reconnection process, it helps you with that. Also, I actually have a whole host of other free hypnosis audios on my website as well. If you go to that resource page that I mentioned before, um, the brittanyhoops.com slash resources, I have audios on manifestation, stress relief, releasing anxiety, breaking negative thought patterns, and so much more. So there's a lot of free hypnosis content that I've created over the years that's there for you. There for you for free. So head over to my website. All the links are in my show notes for this episode. And please do yourself a favor. Reconnect with your true self again because your true self is going to help pull you out of that stuck feeling and into your next chapter, your next era. All music for this podcast is by AQ. And I'll catch you next time.